Okay, guys, it's me again. So, how's it going? All right, I want to talk about something now. And this is uh, what's most impressive about this combination of this technology. So, um, these bricks are actually not 33 volts or 36 volts. They're 33.6 volts each. So, that means that when I put three of these bricks together, I have 100 volts, okay? So if I made them all 12S, um, all of these here for my output battery, because basically input battery, device, output battery. And after the output battery will be the inverter, which I have to purchase yet. And we want a high voltage inverter maybe even a thousand volt inverter. The higher the voltage, I can raise the voltage very easily and gain more by the raise in voltage and the reduction of the high voltage to low voltage through the MPPT uh, than other methods for uh, where I'm at at this moment in time with the technology. So anyways, uh, basically, if I build another one of these bricks, which I likely will, I may even build two of them so that I have, let's check it out. Uh, say this is 33 volts, so we've got 66, so we've got 100 volts, so we've got about 130 volts. Kind of like what's coming out of the wall at 15 amp hours. So this would provide, four of these bricks would provide 130 volts to a unit like this DC at 15 amps for one hour means it would run this thing at full power for an hour uh, one charge one charge from these doubled I'd have to have four of them uh, the reason I bring this to your attention is this specific induction cooker from what I understand will operate on DC power maybe not on the power out of the device uh, on the high frequency AC converted to DC eh, it probably has to go through something like this first right for the best results so um, it will run DC like out of a brick here so uh, basically what this is allows is that you don't have to tie up the output grid tie inverter to power the device this device could be directly powered from the battery or a number of these devices for however much throughput power you wanted to achieve uh, so, but you would scale the batteries on the input, which there would have to be four. You could get away with three because this will run at 80, 77 or 87 volts uh, on the low side, and it will operate on DC power because all of these inside operate on DC power. The AC mains comes in, gets rectified to DC, and then either the MOSFET or the IGBT uh, driver inside here operates on DC and brings this coil to resonance very much like, um, very similar, not the same, but much similar. Uh, these are set to a specific frequency. These bring whatever wire you hook up into it to perfect resonance for that length of wire. This is a self-regulating, this is a forced resonance or slightly off the frequency of resonance, forced. Uh, these will bring it right directly into full resonance. Either way, those can be used, these can be used off of the LTO pack, and uh, for them you'd have 130 volts, uh, you know, 1800 watts for one hour constant to run this. In that time, the output of the ring, uh, this is another machine that's heading out, uh, the output of the ring goes into uh, the, the batteries that I will be building soon which are half the capacity, so seven and a half amp hours. So this would actually be two bricks in series here to give me a higher volt, 66 volts per brick. So uh, basically the idea is to scale the two battery banks so that you've always got enough. If this somehow got depleted on you, you always have a reserve here to fill this back up to full capacity to allow the brain to pump it back in here and so forth, the cycle continues. It's a positive feedback loop in a safe manner. And uh, I just wanted to explain another conception device of running these units, could be multiples, run at 400 watts a piece and run four of them 
off of four of these batteries at 130 volts. That's still only 1600 watts, 1800 watts over four machines, and you have four times the output going in at high frequency to charge these output capacitors, which drive your inverter. That will give you, at any instance, 20 amps at 240 volts. 23 amps, I think, are the ones I was looking at, around 5 kilowatts. These inverters are scalable, so as you have more money to put into the system, you buy another set of four of the bricks, you, you put in another couple, four more machines on a server stack, and you double up your battery here, and you throw another inverter on. Now you've got 10 kilowatts constant, whenever you want. And uh, you keep continually scale this up in that manner, if you like. I mean, they make ZVSs now up to 6,000 watts, so I could build a much bigger machine, uh, water cool it, uh, artificial refrigerant it, uh, take copper pipes and silver plate them so that we have a VOP of about 98% on the skin effect. And uh, when we run some artificial refrigerant, we will become super conductive. And when we can extract our energy in a superconductive manner, uh, it's impossible to have an under unity device. Anyways, pure DC, completely off grid, AC unit run on DC, powering the system, completely scalable. That is my TPU energy amplifier technology. And uh, it's a standalone system. This could be built to anything, uh, an e-bike, to power an e-bike perpetually, just scale it down, whatever. Um, an electric car, a house, a factory. It is completely scalable and very, very high quality to last a long time. Anything can be improved, the drivers, the coils, uh, but the technology here itself is, is a solid sound investment. All right, guys, just wanted to bring to you my closed loop positive feedback TPU device that is completely scalable. All right, guys, have a great day. Ciao.